Welcome to Stream Economy, where we deep dive into movies, TV shows, and games. Obviously, the biggest news of the week, it is officially official, The Mandalorian has a full cast. I'm really excited to talk about this, guys. Way back in March of this year, we learned Jon Favreau would be executive producing the show, but we didn't know the title or the timeline or the cast until the second half of the year. So let's break down what we know and then have a little bit of fun speculating. Here is what we know. We know the timeline. This show is going to take place in between the events of Return of the Jedi and The Force Awakens. So it'll be right around the time where the Empire fell, but the First Order hadn't quite established itself, which I would imagine is an extremely tumultuous time in the galaxy. We also know the where of The Mandalorian, at least kind of. Lucasfilm says that it'll be taking place along the outer reaches of the galaxy which we'll get to this in a second, but we got to talk about the cast of this show because, my friends, it is stacked. Pedro Pascal is playing the Mandalorian, I assume, because he is the star of the show, and he was fantastic as the Red Viper in Game of Thrones, except for that whole getting his head popped like a grape thing. Gonna smash your head in like this! No, I can't watch that again. No, please don't make me watch that again. God. I still think about it at night. Also joining him is Gina Carano, who played Angel Dust in Deadpool and looked totally badass doing it. Then you got this guy, the one and only Carl Weathers, the OG Apollo Creed in Rocky, and my favorite, Chubbs from Happy Gilmore. On top of that, you've got award-winning actor Nick Nolte coming on board. There's Emily Swallow, who's known for her role as Amara on Supernatural. They've got Omid Abtahi, who plays Salim in American Gods, and also a role that we're gonna have to talk about in one second. Giancarlo Esposito, the man himself, Gus frickin' Fring from Breaking Bad, one of my favorite villains of all time. And last but certainly not least is German director Werner Herzog. Wow, those casting rumors were true. That is so weird and so awesome. Rounding all of that cast out is executive producer Dave Filoni, who'll be working alongside Favreau. If you're not familiar with Filoni, he's the mastermind behind The Clone Wars and Star Wars Rebels, and he'll be directing the first episode of the show. So who's playing what, and where might it all take place? Well, now we get to have a little bit of fun and speculate. So based on the first hero image that Jon Favreau shared earlier this year, which is this, and Lucasfilm's assertion that the show would take place in the outer reaches of the galaxy, I have some ideas. Here is a map of the entire Star Wars universe. It's a lot. But the Outer Reaches of the Galaxy, my friends, already has a name. It's called the Outer Rim. And guess what system is in the Outer Rim? Mandalore, right in this area. How convenient, how convenient for all of us. Now, if they do decide, as they have said, that they are following a lone gunfighter, it's possible we may not actually need to visit Mandalore all that often. So what are some other seedy locations in the Star Wars universe that the show could take place? Let's take a look at what is nearby Mandalore. So just north of Mandalore, you've got Dathomir, and then north of that, you've got Dantooine, and just a little bit farther away, you've got Korriban, which you might recall from a little game called Knights of the Old Republic 2. Now those locations are all up in this area, but my money is gonna be on this area of the Outer Rim right here, better known as Hut space. Now, Hut space is probably experiencing a bit of a chaotic time at this point when The Mandalorian takes place, particularly considering Jabba the Hutt was recently choke chained to death by Leia when this show kicks off. If I don't see Nar Shaddaa on this show, I will eat my hat, friends. If I had a hat to eat, I would eat it. Oh, and remember that actor, Omid Abtahi? Uh, remember how I said he had an interesting role? Well, he played a character in the Clone Wars who was being groomed for Mandalorian leadership. Maybe he's playing a similar character or the very same character all grown up. And speaking of characters all grown up, is it possible that either Emily Swallow or Gina Carano could be playing somebody related to the famous Sabine Wren from Star Wars Rebels? She was a super cool Mandalorian warrior in that show, so it's not impossible that she might return as a grown-up. I would not be surprised one bit to see her make some kind of appearance, even via whispers, in the show. And if Dave Filoni is the person in charge of this, or even co-managing it, I mean, this guy loves to bring back characters from previous canon that he created. 
Just take a look at Thrawn, everyone's favorite blue Chiss, and Commander Rex, who popped up years after the Clone Wars to help Kanan and the crew fight in Star Wars Rebels. As for Giancarlo Esposito, I mean, I love seeing this guy as a villain. I love seeing him as a villain, so I'd love to see him as maybe like an alien villain. I think that'd be really cool. Um, Werner Herzog, though, uh, maybe an old sage-like Mandalorian who's sort of retired, lives in the Outer Rim, kind of has shady dealings. I don't know. I don't know what he's going to do. I'm looking forward to it so much, whatever it is, though. Now, as for Nick Nolte and Carl Weathers, I mean, I really don't know what Nick Nolte's character could be, but if I had to guess, it will involve some sort of moral gray area, and especially if they're going to places like Nar Shadda, seems like a guy who'd be hanging around there, you know what I'm saying? As for Carl Weathers, I mean, Carl Weathers just has to be a good guy, right? I mean, he's Apollo Creek. This show is going to launch in late 2019, so we have plenty of time to speculate, put out our fan theories. I'm dying to hear what you guys think about the cast, the location, all the different details. Like, what's your perfect The Mandalorian? I'm dying to know. Now, the only thing that I am cranky about, I will admit, is that I'm going to have to pay for yet another frickin' streaming service when Disney Plus launches next year. Um, by the way, uh, hey, Cyril's, aren't you like some kind of Werner Herzog fan? Isn't this, what do you think? Oh, I can't even get mad today, man. Even though there's another Star Wars thing being made, for no goddamn reason at all, they make too many Star Wars things. Rogue One was shit. Solo was shit. Everything except Star Wars: The Last Jedi, which is the best Star Wars movie, is shit. The Mandalorian is going to be no shit. It's going to be good. Come on, man. Werner Herzog is going to be in Star Wars, man. Every time I think about it, I just smile. My mind's going crazy right now. Who's he going to play? Is he going to play like a, a documentarian following the adventures? A uh, Jedi that tries to ingratiate himself in a Wookiee clan and then gets eaten alive by Wookiees. Aye, Werner Herzog, man. Fair play to you, big man. And Star Wars. Live your life, man. I love it. I love it. Good stuff. I'm happy. I love life. Werner Herzog. Thanks, man. Brilliant. See you later. Thanks so much for watching. That is the last Stream Economy of 2018. We will be back with our live Stream Economy from CES 2019, the week of January 7th. So you don't want to miss that. We're going to have live Mark Serrells, unedited. It's going to be very exciting. For more Stream Economy, check out all these episodes over here. Have a great holiday season. Be good streamers.